In the future, for a war fought on another planet, humans use artificial intelligence to create a self-reproducing slasher machine as a weapon against their enemies. But it evolves, disguising its form, and takes on a life of its own. No one can control it as it seeks to take over the Earth. Is it even possible? Let's roll in the following movie for the truth. In the opening scene, an armed soldier carrying a tube from the NEB stumbles through a desolate landscape, trying to infiltrate the Alliance complex. Curious about his intentions, the Alliance soldiers do not shoot him. Suddenly, there is a burrowing through the sand. It is a screamer, an artificial intelligent weapon designed by the Alliance that seeks out and cuts apart the enemy. While the soldier shoots at them, they attack, detaching his body as he crawls away. I guess he's not armed anymore. The Screamers then annihilate their target. Chuck, second in command, goes out to retrieve the tube. He is protected from the Screamers with his wristband that the Alliance made to neutralize the sensors on Screamers. He plucks the tube from the arm and takes it to Joe, his commander, so they can open it and reveal its contents. The message in the tube is from the Commander Cooper of the NEBS, who seeks two officers to come to NEB's headquarters to negotiate a truce. Joe sends a message to his boss on Earth, Secretary Green, asking permission. Green replies in the form of a hologram, telling Joe and Chuck that non-radioactive beryllium fuel was discovered on planet Triton 4, so there is no need to fight over mining on Sirius 6B anymore. Green advises not to meet with Cooper, for it is no longer necessary since the war is over. Soon after, a spacecraft crashes into the complex, killing all passengers on board. Rummaging through the wreck, they find an arsenal of weapons, including nuclear explosives, and learn the people were really troops. There is one survivor, a rookie soldier named Michael Jefferson. He is summoned by Joe and asks what Joe is meddling with. Joe explains that the Screamers are mobile slashers trained to kill any living thing, especially any bees who don't wear a neutralizing wristband. The Alliance invented these self-replicating artificially intelligent machines as a weapon for the war. Joe notices that this Screamer has modified itself. Jefferson informs them that troops are being sent to Triton 4 to decimate the NEBS, and that Secretary Green was arrested and eliminated by Alliance Command two years ago. Joe does not know who to believe, so to solve his dilemma, he decides to take Jefferson with him to NEB headquarters and negotiate a peace treaty, as Cooper asked. They climb over the snow-covered hills and radio Chuck at the base, informing him they will check in every four hours. Jefferson learns that the radiation is so bad, almost nothing can live on the planet now. People must smoke cigarettes to counteract the lethal effects from the pollution. So I guess here, smoking cigarettes is good for you. Joe tells Jefferson the whole landscape is ruined due to the explosions by NEBs and many strikers and civilians were killed. The alliance was formed to stop the NEB company from continuing to use such dangerous fuel. Now, only a few of them remain to fight the NEBs while using the Screamers, named so for their high-pitched sounds while attacking, that the Alliance scientists invented. These Screamers scavenge living things for food, reproduce themselves, and even have the ability to evolve. No one understands these semi-alive killing machines that burrow underground anymore. They are out of human control. Hiding in the vacated city is a boy named David, clutching his teddy bear. David says he is an orphan of the war and begs to come with them. He is so cute and states that he has been alone for years. They cannot figure out how he evades the screamers and finds food. But he is just too adorable with his little bear to just leave behind. Finally, they relent taking pity on him. They warm themselves beside the fire when Joe picks up a rock, which is really a screamer, disguised as a rock, and it scurries away. Joe says things are not what they used to be, as David laughs. A screamer goes to attack Jefferson, who has removed his armband to listen to loud music from his glasses. Joe shoots it back and smashes the glasses in anger. But they learn the screamer was actually going after Joe. He studies its parts and removes a chip. This screamer is different. It's an improved version. 
they come upon NEB headquarters, but as they approach, a soldier named Becker is scanning them and shoots David. David comes apart, exposing his machinery as they learn David is really a highly evolved screamer disguised as a human. Becker tells them that David was tagging them, trying to infiltrate the complex so it could kill all those inside. He tells them it is not the first time a screamer looking like a human entered and killed everyone. Jefferson and Joe follow the soldiers into the bunker. Jessica, a black marker dealer, joins and offers them some scotch. She then invites Joe up to her room. He asks where the commander is, and Jessica discloses that some David-like screamers entered the above bunker, and all she heard was fighting and screaming, then silence. She surmises that the same must have happened to the command center a floor above. She says she will lead him to command if he can take her to Earth. Joe says that is impossible, and with the war now on Triton 4, they were probably abandoned on Sirius 6B only to die. She agrees to lead him underground and then go back to Alliance headquarters with him. Becker and the other soldier, Ross, join them on their mission. They trudge through mud, rats, and machinery in the corridors to get there. Once inside the floors above, they discover carnage everywhere, but no bodies, just red pools. Ross flips out, screaming and panicking, so he gets a timeout by Joe, who tells Jefferson to shoot him if he even moves. At the command center, Cooper is missing. Before they can access the databanks, a new type of screamer, a skeletal reptilia form, comes, plugs in, and downloads all the information. This would actually make a great pet. Cute, not the snuggly type, but doesn't eat much, and can open cans. Then it goes to attack Ross, but Jefferson protects him with the wristband. But it returns, prompting Ross to shoot the hell out of it, while destroying all the databanks as well. They hear the David voices, and Joe tells them to evacuate, but he doesn't leave until he can scan the screamer chips and discover the revisions. He learns of new prototypes 1 and 3, but there is another version 2, which is still a mystery. A David screamer goes to attack him, so he shoots it. As he is running from the many Davids, Jefferson returns to save him, and they escape through the elevator. When safe, Joe asks if they know about the other type of screamer. Jessica says it is some kind of wounded soldier that asks for help, then kills, but they have never seen it. So that means it could be anybody. They all start suspecting each other. Then, Becker accuses Ross and throws his knife into him. But there is blood on the knife, so they just killed an innocent man. They leave for Alliance Compound, walking all night and arriving just before dawn. Joe calls his friend Chuck to come out and open the doors, but he keeps repeating the same thing. Suspecting something is really foul inside, the group starts backing away and preparing for battle. Just then, the doors open and dozens of Davids emerge, all walking like zombies. Joe and the away team start shooting at them, but they keep advancing and screeching loudly. Joe uses a flamethrower and some ignite and go down. Yet, more and more are coming, so he finally asks for the nuke Jefferson stole, and they launch it toward the compound. The explosion device causes a blast that kills everything and sends the group flying over the dunes as well. Moments later, Becker is crying out in pain, and Jefferson limps toward for help. Just then, Joe realizes he is the other type of screamer and calls to Jefferson to stop, but it's too late. Becker then crushes Jefferson and hurls him far away, and with his super strength, then throws Joe too. But Joe just shoots him in half. So much for self-awareness, he should have tried self-preservation. It is just Jessica and him alive now. She reaches for his hand, but he slashes her to see if she is a machine. But she bleeds. They then share a long kiss amongst the flames. I've uh, actually had dates that started off like this too. They trek through the snow and camp out along the way. They arrive, and he uses his bio-signature to open the cave leading to the spaceship. There is a loose wire preventing their escape, but Joe fixes it and initiates the launch sequence. Then Chuck, his old best friend, appears acting aggressively. Chuck brings up a place they both went in the past, telling Joe he will never see it again. The screamer disguises Chuck intends to kill Joe and invade the Earth. 
He throws Joe down, but he catches a propeller chain. Then Chuck leaps onto it and grabs Joe. Screamer Chuck tells how he killed the real one in gruesome detail. They fight and fall some more. Joe stabs him with a bolt, then uses loose wires to electrocute him, thus damaging his circuitry. Finally, Screamer Chuck plummets to his death, getting vaporized by a laser. With all obstructions cleared, he goes down to Jessica at the spaceship, only to find that there is only one seat and life support system. They argue because Joe insists Jessica take it, but she says she can't. Just then, another Jessica appears. She reveals that Jessica Prototype Screamer is even more human and can even bleed. Jessica tells him she wanted to reveal herself because she was starting to care about him, but he throws her off the platform. Immediately, the other Jessica boards the ship headed for Earth, but the original Jessica pulls her out and they begin to fight, super strength and acrobat style. Finally, new Jessica stabs and electrocutes the original. She then turns to Joe and screams, but the spaceship begins to blast off and the flames burn her up. I guess now she's technically an old flame? The original Jessica confides to Joe that she didn't want to go back to Earth, for she was afraid of the harm she would do there. Joe says her kind is coming up in the world. Like humans, they now learned to kill each other. And with her last gasp, she tells him she also learned to love. Joe boards the craft, transmits to Earth, has clearance to arrive, and is on his way home. As the shuttlecraft is speeding through the stars towards Earth, we see David's teddy bear in the ship, and it starts moving on its own. What do you think about this old sci-fi movie? Will robots one day be this real? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to watch more on movie shortens, click on our next videos and playlist on the screen. And if you'd like even more, please visit our sister channel, NextShot, in the new segment, Kill Count, where they have a fun time tallying the kill count in some campy horror movies. Until next time, thanks for watching.